Hi everyone, today we are going to do some drilling. We're uh, on grass seeding. Haven't got any footage of ploughing it or cultivating it, but uh, I just thought I would uh, get some footage of the drilling and uh, setting the drill up and everything. So uh, I hitched up yesterday, tractor, using this tractor on the drill. Um, I'll explain a bit more about that in a while. So there's the drill ready to go. Baler, that uh, finished, we've actually finished baling grass now, so uh, we've just got to um, bale some straw. So we'll small bale some of the spring barley and uh, we will round bale all the headlands and one of the fields of spring barley. And we've got um, some round bales of wheat to bale for, that we bought on a neighboring farm where we bought the other barley straw that I was carrying back in one of the other videos. So. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I'll just check the oil a minute and uh, we'll get going and loaded up and calibrated. We always um, check the oil on the tractors every day, just a habit. And uh, Dad has always sort of um, encouraged it, really, and now it's just a habit of doing it. Um, seeds, we uh, got them on a pallet here, and uh, the mixture is a here seeds is where it's come from and I uh, can't really see that and yes here seeds it's uh, their yellow mix and uh, there's uh, an early perennial ryegrass hybrid ryegrass intermediate perennial ryegrass intermediate uh, another intermediate perennial ryegrass said um, diploids and tetraploids and a late perennial ryegrass another late perennial ryegrass a diploid and tetraploid again and uh, some timothy so uh, it's 14 kilos in the mix and uh, it looks like quite a good mix no clover in it the reason we have put no had no clover in it is because the fields that we're going to be seeding have got weed problems so that's like creeping thistle docks and possibly some stinging nettles but mainly the docks and creeping thistle so by not putting clover in it gives us an opportunity to be able to control those weeds so that's what i think it is there right we'll get loaded up and calibrated it drills all loaded up and uh, looks all right chucked in a little bit of um, stuff we had left which is um Italian ryegrass but that has we thought it was just a straight Italian ryegrass because we're looking it uh, has got some red clover in it so uh, I just said that we're not going to put any clover in down there but but the amount that we had here we've just chucked some on top here but it'll mix through but it'll be hardly anything by the time it's mixed in and like I say we're not it'll be alright probably for the first year and there'll be a bit of red clover there but uh, it'll be such a small amount spread over the field that's not really worth worrying about and uh, yeah so uh, to calibrate it we uh, take off the drive there I don't know if you can see down there undo the undo that uh, elbow tuck that out of the way yeah, so that comes off. And put the meter in handle on there. Reset the clock back to zero. And uh, wind this handle, which is like 34.4 turns. And then it will read 41 on the clock here. So we'll do that and then uh, measure what seed we've got and then that's a good starting point. So we'll do that and then we'll weigh it. Right, so I've got these scales here. I've bought these quite a few years ago and uh, they're postage scales and they didn't cost very much at the time. And uh, we always use them to weigh the seed when we're drilling uh, grass seeds or barley or even we've done it for rape because they'll go down really low they'll weigh up to 34 kilos and they'll weigh down as low as sort of like 
grams, so uh, so they they sort of weigh just a normal letter, so they're ideal for that and uh, nice and accurate. Right, so we'll get them turned on. What we've measured out of the drill is ten percent of an acre, so we've got enough seed. With, I've got a book for the drill and. Uh, in the back I've sort of written down all the field sizes and uh, so I write down what the drill has actually drilled at the end of drilling so then I know for next time how much seed we've got and what area it is because obviously it's slightly different with overlaps and everything and short ground you've got triangles so like I say if you set the drill exactly the right amount you'll run out for sure because like I say, you haven't taken into account overlaps on headlands and a slight overlap on the drilling width as well because of um, not sort of GPS or anything like that. So, so we've got the seed rate is 14, so we'll sort of aim for maybe 13 and a quarter kilos an acre to 13 and a half kilos an acre, I would think, and uh, hopefully that will be plenty. So, we've got 15 acres to drill, and uh, that should work out all right i hope so uh, we'll stick on what's come out of the drill and see what we've got as a starting point so i'll set it on kilos and uh, i'm just going to put a bucket on the scales yeah let's put the bucket on the scales and uh, that's where it's weighing 0.47 of a kilo so we'll put that to zero and then we'll tip uh, seeds into the bucket and hopefully we've got something like 1.3 right we're way over look so that's like um, 1.65 kilos so that would be like 16 and a half kilos an acre so uh, that would be like three and a half kilos too much per acre so need to go and shut the drill down and calibrate again so we'll go and do that and then uh, see what we can how close we can get it right we've just uh, recalibrated it and uh, shut it down we've actually done it twice we first time we shut it down a turn and a half and that got it down to 13.9 kilos an acre i thought that was probably a bit tight as i don't want to run out so uh, we've now just shut it down again another third of a turn and uh, this is what we've got now so we've got 13.3 kilos an acre so it's a little bit under what they're recommending but it's still early it's the 26th of august today the soil's warm and clean seed bed so uh, i think that'll be fine and we'll have a look at them when they come up and uh, that should be good because we always tend to do this just go a little bit below the seed rate and uh, yeah i think that'll be all right Right, we'll get the drill all back together and uh, go and get set up. Something that we always do is keep the seed labels. Just, well, the reason why we keep the seed labels partly is uh, because of farm assurance. And uh, they like to see that. And especially with the barley seed, they want to see what it's been treated with for uh, like a, a seed treatment. So, uh, that's the reason we do that and if, well i don't know probably i don't know when it was back in around 2000 probably sometime around then maybe the late 90s we bought seed from a merchant and it was c2 seed and we planted it and it was winter barley so we planted it and it never came up i think it was like the, well they tried to say that it was our fault and that uh, we'd done something wrong and uh, luckily we had the seed labels kept back and we could prove what we planted and uh, then when they investigated it they'd had more of this batch of seed and they tested it and uh, it was 11 percent germination i think at the time and uh, so it had been sprayed with a pre-emergent spray at the time so uh, it had to be re-plowed and uh, then re-drilled in the spring with spring barley and uh, they paid in the end they had to pay a sort of compensation for um, all the cultivations we'd done um, i think there was also loss of yield between spring and winter barley so they paid that but that was 
they they probably may have well they may have well have got out of that if we hadn't kept the seed label so it's just something as I say because of farm assurance and it's just a good thing to do even if you only keep the seed labels until it's up and you've actually got something there growing but uh, anyway that's that's what we do right we'll go and make a start right we're all set up and uh, got it running there something uh, I always do when I before I start drilling and just check periodically because I have had it before um, and you've got these little uh, they go up underneath the holder when you drop it down to stop them up getting jammed up in there but uh, I did have it once uh, when we first had the drill and uh, mud got jammed in one of them even with that on there and uh, they blocked it and uh, drilled a field of winter barley like it and uh, there was a colder block and it showed up and uh, it's just annoying really I hate stuff like that and uh, so I always just check that uh, they're all clear and got seed coming out of them and that you feel air blowing out just sort of silly really just paranoid but uh, I'd sort of sooner be like that than uh, just drive it on thinking it's all right and find out when they come up that you had a block holder and, and uh, you've got a missed drill. So uh, yes, yeah, so we're all ready to go and uh, here's our seed bed and uh, we roll it down so it's all rolled in front of the drill so the idea is that the seeds won't go too deep. So uh, this one's ready to go so I'll start drilling. And uh, Dad's next door, he's just now started, he's going to roll that one, so we've got these two to do this morning. And uh, I had a phone call just now to say that uh, they might be combining wheat today. So uh, if that's the case, I'll be straw to bale later. But uh, So I've got to drill this 15 acres this morning and then take cattle to the abattoir because uh, I've had that booked in and they're going this afternoon so I'll be taking them ourselves and uh, then hopefully if I'm not too late back from doing that I uh, will go and start bailing. Yeah, so I was um, last year, if any of you remember, I was I drilled all the grass seeds with the other tractor. We had dual wheels on it and uh, we did it like that, turned the top link forward so we could uh, get the coulters just, just to be touching the ground. That was for the herbal lays and uh, it worked really well, but uh, we... Uh, I sort of decided not to do it this year because uh, well we aren't drilling herbal lays for one thing and uh, there's no clover here as well so uh, we've, we've rolled the fields which I said earlier and I'm uh, drilling on the rolling so that uh, keeps the drill fairly shallow as well stops the seeds going too deep and uh, we've done it like this a lot in the past and uh, it, it, it works all right it's just you get drill rows but uh, we still had drill rows even last year what we did but they weren't as bad but uh, I'm sort of not too worried about it for this sort of um, seeding and uh, it's a lot easier drilling with this tractor than it is with the other one. You can turn easier on the end with the other one because it's two wheel drive but uh, it's much easier drilling with this one. So uh, that's what I decided to do drilling um, in economy PTO got it running at 540 just keep the fan speed up and the air up because uh, 
don't want to block it because there's not enough fan speed to blow the seeds out. But uh, yes, yeah, so the tractor's running at 1550 RPM to do 540 economy. But uh, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's like I say, the ground conditions are nice and warm, so hopefully they'll come up quickly. Probably could have got on a bit quicker than we have with it. Always sort of like to get the grass seeds drilled in August if we can. Chap I uh, used to know well, he uh, always reckoned that in Cornwall, probably the best two months to be grill drilling grass seeds in begin with A, so April and August. And uh, sort of last few years, with, well this year wasn't so bad, but dry springs, we uh, sort of have had some disasters really drilling spring grass seeds and uh, just because they got droughted and didn't uh, didn't work very well so uh, we try to only seed in the autumn now if we can and as I say if we sort of put grass seeds in in August is ideal just get up and get away nicely we sort of early September is alright and we've done that before and had sort of successful grass seeds but uh, there's loads of slugs about this year so just the earlier we could get them in the better like I say we could have been on earlier really but uh, just busy with other stuff and I uh, didn't get a chance to play the field so we've obviously got it all done now and it's like I say gone in in nice conditions so fairly happy with what we're doing or very happy with what we're doing loads of slugs about this year so uh, we have bought some slug pellets and uh, I did ask the agronomist about mixing them in with the grass seeds but uh, he wasn't very keen on that idea so uh, we didn't do that he reckons it's best to broadcast them on after so uh, that's what we're gonna do and I think probably we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes as I say I'm hoping it will come up quickly and we won't have too much of a problem but uh, I'm sort of thinking probably if we do get a problem it will be around the edges of the field because we've ploughed it there's no trash here and uh, that's always a bit of an issue with the slugs they like the trash and green don't they so there's none of that so uh, hopefully we won't have a problem in the middle of the field but we will keep an eye on it and monitor the situation and uh, hopefully we'll only need to put them on around the headland. So we only bought one bag of slug pellets at the moment and uh, hopefully that'll be all we need. I uh, normally when I'm drilling corn, I always uh, drill six times around the field and uh, we're on 12 meter tram line so that gives you a 24 meter headland but uh, with grass seeds I generally only drill like a 12 meter headland and I'm not putting any tram lines in so uh, I do does mean that I have to shunt on the end and just be a bit careful that I don't hit the markers in the hedge or anything but uh, it's just sort of by doing that and shunting I do have um, it doesn't uh, leave it so rough when I turn, but it takes a bit longer, but it's all right. But now it's going well. Right, I think I'll leave that there and uh, I'll uh, get a little bit more footage at the end when I clean the drill out. And uh, got some footage from outside so uh, yeah let's get this done we're nearly done I imagine I've done probably like a good six acres now so right we're all done and uh, let's have a look see what we've got left yeah a little bit left in there but nothing too much so uh, first field didn't uh, 
when I drilled it in the autumn, it drilled 6.2, and uh, now after I had a look at the clock on the drill after I finished, and uh, it drilled like 6.02, so it drilled 0.2 of an acre less. So uh, that's probably why I got a little bit more seed left than maybe I should have, but. Uh, I think that's just overlap and um, I turn faster when I'm drilling winter barley because I drill six times round so I just pick the drill up and then turn and so I'm probably dropping it a bit quicker as well so uh, I think all those things have a bearing on like the area you drill because uh, I always drop the drill a lot quicker for drilling grain than I do for grasses because when you're drilling grass seeds, you turn the wheel, the metering wheel, and uh, the seed is almost instantly there at the coulter because it's very light. But uh, when I'm drilling barley, it does take a bit longer, it's, and it's not a huge amount of time, but it does take a little bit longer for the seed to get to the coulter because it's, as I say, it's heavier. So, uh, yeah, so I always drop the drill a bit quicker, and, and I guess that has an effect on the amount of area you drill so uh, yeah right that's good and I'm well pleased with that that that's in and uh, the point is now they're in they sort of uh, do the work themselves and uh, they're growing while we're doing other stuff so uh Right, so uh, it's now Saturday the 7th of September and uh, the grass seeds are up. We uh, have got some barley volunteers, but it's not too bad. And uh, there they are. Get down and uh, they're looking nice. I say there's some barley volunteers there across there. That's where a tram line was, I think. And uh, but But they are up and Looking nice, you see down the drill rows and uh, yeah, pleased with how they're looking. So, uh, let's cross the headland. We've had quite a bit of rain. We've had 22 mil of rain. Um, that was Thursday, I think. So, uh, yeah, we still have got a field of spring barley to combine and uh, I don't know when that'll happen for a minute because the forecast is not looking too great. But uh, yeah, we've, all the straw is bailed and that's just that one field of spring barley. So it's not the end of the world, but uh, and I'm sure it will come eventually. But uh, yeah, it'll be right. But yeah, so that's the grasses. Just wanted to show you that. That's uh, looking across the other field next to it. And... Uh, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, remember to like and subscribe and I'll be back with another video soon.